Thank you for your kind words, Mr. Webster. Ms. Gonzalez, administrators and dignitaries, teachers, parents, and most importantly, Earl Hayes graduating class of 2016. Congratulations on making it to graduation after what feels like an eternity of high school. Your hard work and perseverance have brought you here, and this ceremony is a celebration of all your successes. My name is Jasmine Amy, and it's an honor to be a valedictorian. It feels so strange to have arrived at this stage. If anyone had asked me to describe the year in December, I would have been able to write a five-page dissertation. But when suddenly faced with summing up an entire high school experience, there seems to be at once too many and too few words to encapsulate these past four years. I've come to a few conclusions, though, and hopefully they do it justice. Here at this ceremony is where we celebrate our growth. Here is where we reflect on the friendships we've made. And here is where we say our official goodbyes, as bittersweet as they may be. Earl Hay contains over 2,000 students within his walls. We have enough people to constitute a small town. And what a talented, dedicated, and wonderful town this truly is. In our beginning years, it feels as though we have been swept up in a current too fast, too large to comprehend. And in such a massive school, it is easy to feel alone. It is easy to feel different. And we will undoubtedly feel this sense of isolation as we progress into our secondary pursuits. But looking back on our experience in Earl Hay, we can see that we've become resilient enough to know that this feeling does not last forever. The boundless energy of Earl Hay culture does not let one live in solitude and apathy for long. Clubs and sports teams bring us into the fold, while assemblies and events beckon us to reveal our talents. We are a diverse group, made of many cultures, beliefs, and interests. We are unique because we are triple threat. We achieve in athletics, we advocate for the arts, and we are accomplished in academics. Let me isolate just a few of our many achievements. In athletics this year, our swim team won the city championships and had the highest number of swimmers advanced to offset. In the arts, the dance majors once again packed Brigham Hall full of spectators for dance night. And in academics, several students placed in the U of T essay writing contest, while others dominated in the TSB Poetry Slam. What connects us as a grade is the enthusiasm that we bring to each of our activities. That and also the fact that we are the last grade to know that the cafeteria used to only sell the extra large cookies for $2. <laughs> we also share an unspoken agreement about jaywalking to the subway. And it is that we will all walk across Doris Avenue if one brave soul steps off the curb. <laughs> this school has our memories etched into every part of its being. They're in the chorus of footsteps climbing the stairs to the William Tell Overture. They're in the rising murmur that ripples across the library. And most importantly, they're in our web of friends expanding ever outwards, which keeps them alive long after we've crossed this stage. It is important to keep these memories with us. The successes we have achieved and the challenges we have endured will fortify us as we venture forth into the so-called world of adulthood. The elation we felt in participating in an event, our joy in being part of a club, and our pride in completing difficult assignments, they remind us of the possibility for new friendships, new opportunities, and new successes. And the hardship of arduous exams and demanding summers has taught us the importance of tenacity and dedication. We signify the end of our high school journey by walking self-consciously across the stage, trying to receive a diploma in one hand while awkwardly shaking hands with the other. Overall, I cannot imagine a more stressful experience. It feels like we are being dragged into adulthood by the fronts of our robes. And for parents and students alike, this action is the shedding of our childhoods, for which we have grown too big. Now we have a whole new set of fears to face, such as one, Figuring out how much pasta you're supposed to boil to get a normal sized meal, and two, taxes. For the latter, I only know enough to say that those of you going into accounting are perhaps the bravest of us all. It's a dark, dark world out there, and soon we will all be at the mercy of your number crunching duties. In truth, these new responsibilities are only a fraction of what lies beyond the threshold. They are one tile among many in the colorful mosaics of your lives. Right now, our mosaics are small, 
unfinished. But as we take on new challenges, seek out new opportunities, and make new friends, we will slowly add to these mosaics until one day we can step back and see the grand and beautiful design of our experiences. And now I'll give some thanks are due. Firstly, to the administration. Thank you for keeping the engine of Earl Hay running smoothly. You're the law and order in this small town, and it's the sheer amount of effort that you put in behind the scenes that makes it work so seamlessly. To the caretakers, thank you, not only for cleaning up, but also for playing amazing pop music as you ride by your Zambonis or whatever they want. <laughs> to teachers, thank you for being mentors and friends. You gave us the knowledge and tools to understand our world, but you also shared your wisdom through your stories. The connections we have made with you through our years will be cherished. And lastly, I'd like to extend thanks to all parents. Thank you for your endless support, encouragement, and kindness. You're really the only people to whom I can say we literally would not be here without you. <laughs> I'd like to thank my own parents personally. Uh, my mom told me not to talk about her, but I'm going to do it anyway, so I'm going to be in big trouble later. <sighs> yeah. Mom, Dad, I love you. Thank you for reminding me to stand for my beliefs and teaching me to learn from my mistakes. Thank you for your gentle wisdom and your unwavering confidence in my abilities. And lastly, thank you for paying for Netflix. I probably don't deserve to use your password, but I've already made a profile, so there's no going back now. <laughs> really, there are a lot of things that will be missed as we leave Earl Hay, but the path ahead is not obscured and shadowed. There's a reason why we call it commencement. On commencera un nouveau chapitre, or we will begin a new chapter. I would try to justify speaking French, but the only reason is because I have taken it for four years. Now I can conjugate verbs in future tense. And if the French is not enough proof of this assembly's importance, then I urge you to look around, no, wait, look around, and take in the fact that this is the first and last time we will all be wearing the same outfit. <laughs> you will step out of this blue polyester bag like a slightly sweaty, disoriented butterfly emerging from the cocoon, ready to explore this next chapter of your lives. We are all scattering in different directions next year, heading to different universities, careers, and countries. Many of us will never meet again after four years of constant companionship. But with this ending comes a fresh start. And if our paths cross again, I cannot wait to know what great things you've accomplished. So, graduates of Earl Haig, thank you for these years we spent together. Thank you for bringing the school to life with your passion and good humor. And thank you for mumbling the same parts of the school songs we all pretend that we know. It. <laughs> Congratulations on all you've achieved in these years, and here's to many more successes in the future. I wish you the best of luck with all your pursuits. Carpe diem, and thank you for your time. Woo!